welcome. This is Coincident, and you are watching a speedrun of God Machine, the final map of Sunlust, played with fast monsters on ultraviolence difficulty. The goal is to get a sub-35 minute run, and we need to get all kills and all secrets. For a long time I thought this challenge was impossible. Several fights on this map felt suicidal with fast monsters. Yet, after some research, I found a sequence of tricks and strategies that made this challenge barely survivable, in theory. In this video you can watch the speedrun and an analysis of the strategies. I'll pause the video to show details and alternate clips. If you want to watch the unedited speedrun without pauses, check the link in the description. The Magnum Opus A monster map to close out the set, an ominous twisted complex of metal and black ooze. This gorgeous, grandiose map surely delivers an atmosphere. In the context of a speedrun, where you need to throw many attempts at this map, the starting section can become repetitive and frustrating, especially when you die to the first fight, which is usually the easiest in the map. With fast monsters, however, it can become dangerous. The first arena is filled with corpses that get resurrected close to the black pillars, and you need to kill everything with a rocket launcher. The main challenge of fast monsters here is that they barely even move. They just stand close to the black pillars and continuously fire at you. If you kill them there, most of them will just get resurrected again and you will waste rockets, time and health. Instead, hide behind this waterfall for about 5 seconds as all the monsters approach your position and get away from the black pillars. This will create an empty space on the opposite side of the arena. But after 5 seconds another group of monsters resurrects. These revenants and turbo pinkies will quickly surround you. Fire a few rockets and try to move to the other side of the arena. Look back around the pillars as all the monsters in fight. Your first priority is to kill the revenants that are close to you. Your second priority is to kill the archfile. You can loop back around the pillars again if you find yourself without space to maneuver. Oh, fuck you, Archie. No. Archie must die. Get out of there. After the first fight is clear, rocket these three arch valves from the side. If you run back and forth across the entrance room, you will trigger another group of monsters to resurrect. Rocket them all down from here. Wow, 14 rockets, that was crappy. Do not go inside to kill them. There are black pillars inside too, and the monsters will just get resurrected again. Once you have 121 kills, the arena is clear. And I ran out of rockets. Wow. A pretty bad start, but let's keep going. After the first fight, you would normally go for the SSG or for the yellow key. However, we're going to gain early access to the BFG by getting inside the cathedral which is locked behind the yellow barriers. To do that, we need to perform a zero press. Do not grab the blue armor yet. A zero press is already hard to perform, but we have to do it on damaging floor, which makes it even more stressful because we have a limited time to pull it off. Jump down on the damaging floor, press this button to open a secret for later, and move across to hug the middle of this wall while facing perfectly forward. You can tell that you're in the right spot if you see these two Tetris pieces in front of you. Push forward to actually move very slowly to the left, and use this super slow movement to get a sub-pixel alignment between the left edge of the L Tetris piece and the middle of the left pixel on top of your gun. Spam use when you're getting close to the right spot. Oh god, 
The Cathedral is the most infamous fight of God Machine. Even on regular ultraviolence difficulty, this arena has claimed the lives of the most seasoned Doom players and speedrunners alike. Add fast monsters on top of that, and this encounter becomes insane. I'm not saying impossible, but the survival rate might be 5% for this fight alone, which is madness when performing a full map run. I could never consistently survive this with fast monsters. Believe me, I tried many strategies, attack priorities, movement patterns, and other tricks to no avail. So instead, we're going to skip the cathedral. Collect the farthest megasphere, hide on the left, dodge to the right, and strafe run into the arch vial, jump, lower the lift in mid-air, and BFG the vial before it blasts you again. Wait for the lift to go up, jump over the yellow barriers, and you've just skipped the cathedral. About 50% of my runs end here. With a very high reaction time of all the monsters surrounding you, failing the arch vial jump is very common. And if you fail the first try at the jump, there is no second try here. You'll be dead. You'll get blasted by all the projectiles of barons, imps, revenants, and cyberdemons. Worst of all, the fireballs from the barons in front of you are the biggest showstopper here. A single fireball to the face is enough to stop your forward momentum and ruin your jump, or throw you to the side into other monsters. That's why I use the left pillars to block the left barons, dodge the fireballs from the right barons, and only then go for the jump spamming use to lower the lift in midair. This is the most successful strategy I could find, despite only nailing it about 50% of the time. If you survive the ordeal, however, you now have two big advantages. One, you started a massive infighting inside the cathedral. Two, you have a nearly fully loaded BFG for the other fights. The next fight will give you the yellow key. Grab all the rockets and strafe run into the radiation suit. Wait six seconds and punch the air to wake up everything. Hide for four more seconds as the Pain Elementals and Kako Demons approach. Then fire three BFG shots. Run across and fire three more BFG shots here. Teleport back up as the Cyber Demon infights. Be careful up here because the Barons from the Cathedral can fire at you from the back. This cyber's still alive. Hit the cyber, please. You guys hit the cyber, please. BFG the cyber before he kills the last Mancubus. Really? How about you fucking die, huh? Wow, that took a while. Time to grab the SSG. The third fight is actually easier with fast monsters, because you can consistently rely on monster infighting. Once the lift starts going up, wait 2 seconds, pre-fire the BFG at the two arachnotrons, and take cover from the archvile attacks. The platform with the Megasphere opens a trap with more vials and the Cyber. Make sure the Cyber gets aggro from all the vials. This part of the fight is much easier with fast monsters. Oh no, the fucking Archie. Time for a 2BFG cyber kill. Okay, fuck you and die. Let's get out of here, rockets please. We can now move across to go press the yellow button, which will open up the plasma fight. 
Don't grab the blue armor yet. Move up on this ledge close to the lamp post and SR40 against the wall. This is an easy trick. Press the button from up here and jump down into the teleporter. The plasma fight is not super difficult, but the chain gunners keep getting resurrected close to the black pillars. By jumping out, we make the chain gunners move away from the pillars Ouch. and infight each other. Get back in the far side of the arena just in time for the Kako Demon Trap to open up. Fire a few rockets at them, and when they get close, fire four BFG shots. Come on, move, move, move. Oh no, oh no, oh no. She's not good. Low health. Shit. Very bad. Once done, grab the 600 cells and 200 health. Oh no, that's very bad. Oh, there's one there. Shit. Okay. I didn't open the thing. Now you can grab the blue armor. Only one rocket. Okay. Now that we are full on health, armor, and BFG ammo, it is time for the Cyber Demon Telefrag Challenge. Jump down here and shoot the switch that opens up this very unique secret fight. On regular ultraviolence, this fight is quite fun and easy. You jump in the arena, lower these four buttons to make the path clear for the cybers, you wait until they move to the center, and then telefrag them with candles. However, this fight is very different with fast monsters, because the cyber demons never move to the center. So this fight becomes similar to the 15 cyber challenge map. You need to two-shot BFG them one by one. Two-shotting cyber demons is easier than it sounds, but you need to be brave and get very close to the cyber, so all the BFG tracers connect like a big shotgun, hopefully at a diagonal to avoid the block map bug. But first you need to dodge the three rockets, or four if you're playing with fast monsters. There's an easy way and a hard way to dodge. The easy way is to strafe in one direction only, and get close after the third rocket. This requires a large open space to move on, and depending on how far you move, the BFG tracers may not always hit in a diagonal. If you don't have much space, you need to do it the hard way, by zigzagging across each rocket and approaching after the third. It's easier to control the tracer's direction this way. For that, I aim the BFG ball at the left arm of the cyber and then get very close to its right arm. The final trick to master this technique is the most important, the timing. You need to get close to the cyber precisely in between the third and fourth rockets to have enough time to dodge in and dodge out. To get the timing right, you need to press fire on your BFG after the cyber has fired the first rocket at the moment that its red frame ends. This takes some practice, but it's not very hard. You can also use the rocket sound as a cue to know when to press fire. Thankfully, in this arena, there's only six cybers and you have lots of spare ammunition. The problem is that the cybers are released on a timer and you only have time to fire two BFG shots before the next cyber is released. After killing four cybers, the last two get released together. I like to stay behind these buttons to block the rockets from the far cyber as I empty my BFG ammo on the closed cyber. If you have enough cells, you can two-shot the final cyber. If you don't, use the SSG to either kill it or push it to the middle for a nice telefrag. 
This is a very time-sensitive and tricky fight, where a simple mistake means a rocket to the face. Many of my speedrun attempts have ended here. Okay, that works. Let's go. We now need to kill the survivors of the Cathedral Chaos. After infighting for this long, most of the cyber demons are usually dead, and there's space to maneuver. Or to, yeah, let's go. Oh, no rockets though. Okay. One cyber there. Some fight. Focus your fire on the revenants and the barons on the side, which almost never infight, and move to the sides of the arena to collect cells. Some fighting. Okay, Cyber's dead. Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Whoa, what am I doing? I'm stuck on something. Uh, still no rockets. That's not good. Let's grab rockets from here. Oh, God. No, no, I, I, I gotta keep that salt, those cells anyway. Rockets. Once the revenants are dead, you can go upstairs for the secret button that telefranks the cybers. In this case, we only need to tag the secret. Um, up here. Let's grab, no, let's grab a megasphere and grab these, let's go. There's five archvals left here, BFG them down. Fuck off. These three back buttons allow you to get out. Really? Uh, all kills, let's get out of here. There's a full stash of health, armor, and ammunition ahead. Confirm you have 565 kills, and you can teleport to the second part of God Machine. Oh no. Welcome to hell. Many of my speedrun attempts have ended here. On regular ultraviolence, this fight can be very chaotic due to the amount of revenants, mencubi, arachnotrons, and worst of all, 12 archvile towers that can zap you from above if you get too close to the edge of the arena. The goal of these archviles is area denial, making the arena even smaller within their range of attack. On regular ultraviolence, this area denial is merely a suggestion. If you step into this red area, there's a chance that one of the vials will target you, but it doesn't always Always happen. Even if you see the flames of a vial about to zap you, you can hug the outer walls to break line of sight and you'll have enough time to safely return to the center. With fast monsters, this fight becomes twice as deadly. Not only are the revenants in Mancubi continuously firing waves of flames and homing rockets, but the arch files will almost always instantly target you as soon as you take one step too far. And there's nothing you can do but take the damage. If you approach the wall to break line of sight, you risk dying to all the fast projectiles, and the vials will target you again after you leave cover. With fast monsters, the area denial is not a suggestion. You have to strictly stay in the center of the arena, danger close to all the other monsters. To survive, you need to master the horseshoe maneuver. You want to strafe in a semicircle across this arena, close to the raising platforms and far from the vials. But you cannot do a complete circle strafe. The back of the arena has two groups of vials that prevent you from looping around. Once you reach the edge of the semicircle, you can't just change directions and go back. 
To perform a correct horseshoe maneuver, you must do a small outwards loop around the hook of the horseshoe. The elevation of these stairs greatly helps with the maneuver. You then return to the semicircle strafe and hook the other end of the horseshoe. That's the plan, let's get started. First, you want to maximize on the initial infighting between the arachnotrons and the revenant. Wait for this pillar to start lowering and stay in this spot until you hear the arachnos firing. Stagger your movement going forward, hook around the megasphere and run back at full speed. BFG the back arachnotrons so you're not shot from behind. Go, 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 go. Keep looping around using the horseshoe maneuver. For now, just focus on not getting hit. Ouch. At first, only fire rockets at the imps upstairs. Don't attack the revenants that are infighting. Let them stay busy with the mancubi. Also, don't use the BFG yet, because all the tracers will get aggro from everything. By picking your targets carefully, they will fire less at you and help you conserve ammunition as infighting does all the work for you. At any loop back point, I choose to grab the Megasphere if my health is below 50. Okay, just time for a Megasphere. Eh, yeah, maybe not. It's time for a Megasphere now. When most of the imps are dead, start firing the BFG at large groups of monsters. Okay, BFG time. Why are there still so many revenants there? Get over here, boys. No, no, no! What am I stuck? What the fuck? That one revenant. Holy fuck. When you run out of BFG juice, finish them off with rockets. And the right and the raising pillar as well, I think. It was not just revenant. No, no god. Okay, I need the megasphere. I should have grabbed it before even. Why am I shooting rockets at single limbs? Go, go, go. You can grab more rockets close to the back arch vials, but make sure they don't see you when you go in and that you don't eat many fireballs when you go out. Oh, these are a lot of imps. of rockets. Okay, let's clear the thank you vine. Oh, we're actually surprisingly done. Once all the mancubi are dead, you can start cleaning up the imps and groups of vials. This then, uh, make your fire. It's fine. Be aware that if the rockets cause a pain state to a vial, that vial will target you as soon as it sees you, even if you're out of range. Yeah. Yeah. 
Grab some cells from back here as you prepare to move on. Okay. You can do this with the BFG to save time, although ammo might be tight later. It. Okay, let's go cyber demons. I grabbed all the rockets, I did now. Before opening the door, you need to make some safe space. Oh, this one first. So kill this tower archvile. Your best chance to hit is at an exactly 45 degree angle. Even though you can't see the archvile from here, vertical auto aim still works. Let the cybers kill the archies. Get out, get out, get out. Okay. Kill them with a the BFG, but don't try to two-shot them. It's not worth the risk on this terrain. Okay, we're cool. I can do the pain elementals. Cells, please. The other door is also easy to clear. Fire seven BFG shots from side to side. The next fight is very dangerous. You want to go in with full health and ammo. That's it? No? There's more? I don't care. Uh, let's do an archvile jump. Approach one of the tower archviles and do this very easy jump into the middle building. This is usually the final stage before the map ends. Once you have 600 cells, jump inside, grab the megasphere, and fire two BFG shots at each pair of archviles. By doing this fight out of order, you'll have an extra Megasphere and lots of BFG ammo, leaving you ready for the next big challenge. Make sure you have 600 cells before you jump out. Grab the cells, please. What the? What am I getting stuck on? And more cells from here. Time to jump down into the deadly revenant trap. There are two squares filled with revenants, and you're given plenty of rockets to shoot them down. On regular ultraviolence, you can fight close to the button. When you see a homing rocket, you sharpen the strafe angle by moving down. Unfortunately, this is not feasible with fast monsters, because you'll be faced with so many homing rockets that it will be impossible to maneuver safely here. So instead, I run down close to the revs and do a long strafing path from one side of the arena to the other. This strategy isn't 100% safe, I will take damage over time. So the faster I kill the revs, the better. And that's why I fully loaded my BFG. I will try to focus and clear the right square first, so then I can hide behind this pillar where it's safe. Also, if at any point my health goes low, I run upstairs and grab the Megasphere. No, 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 fuck. Whoops. Well, fuck. God 
damn it. Now you can peekaboo fire at the refs. Careful with the face rockets here. is racing night right now. I don't have the heart monitor on because I couldn't bother to connect it. But I can feel my heart's racing right now. We're still not done though. This was the fastest slash safest strategy I could find that can still get me to my goal of sub 35 minutes. But unfortunately I've died many times in this arena. It feels horrible to lose an attempt this far into the map. If you can afford to go slower, there's two ways to cheese this fight. If you get in the perfect center of the pillar at 45 degrees, none of the Revenant missiles will hit you. It will be boring as hell to shotgun or chain all of the Revenants in one side. But hey, at least you'll be alive. Another way to cheese this fight is by standing right in the middle of one of the squares. Here, the first row of Revenants is in chase range, so they never fire any rockets. You wait for 30 seconds and go up the lift, from up here, you can shoot rockets down from the edge, but you need to wait a long time behind cover, so this is quite slow and boring too. Also careful with the foot rockets. Enough of cheese, it's time to move on. Okay. Uh, I need a megasphere, I need to fill up on cells. Uh, did I leave a megasphere there? No. So let's grab this. The upcoming fight can be a showstopper. And go. You're faced with a huge crowd of barons, and there's lots of rockets to kill them. On regular ultraviolence, the big challenge of this fight is the fact that the barons will move towards you until you run out of space and die. That problem can be solved by pre-firing a bunch of BFG rounds before rocketing down the survivors. With fast monsters, this fight is very different. The fight becomes a bullet hell. The barons barely move and continuously fire at you. And only after you deplete all your ammunition will you create a hole through the monsters for you to rush across to safety on the other side. But depleting your entire ammo pool takes a long time. You have a very small space to dodge and only one extra megasphere to recover health from. In order to survive this bullet hell, you'll need to master what I call the butterfly maneuver. Here's how it works. Start from the left corner and very slowly strafe right. This is 100% safe and buys you some time. But if you do this until you reach the right corner, you'll take massive damage when you turn back. This is because your slow movement made all the monsters stack their projectiles closely together, creating a focused beam of green death. If you strafe quickly, however, the monster projectiles will be less focused and more spread out across a larger area, increasing your chances of turning back alive. So move slowly until the middle of the arena and then quickly strafe to the far right corner and you'll create small gaps in the enemy fire that will give you a chance to turn back with less damage. This helps, but it's not enough. The little damage you take every time you turn will accumulate over time and deplete your health to zero. To really master the butterfly maneuver, you need wings. The idea is to add an extra dimension by quickly moving forward as well as right. You're making the projectiles even more spread apart just before you turn back around. This works because the monsters are standing in a line and actually fire at you in a triangle shape, which makes the enemies on the far left aim somewhere along the side of the right wall. These projectiles are wasted and will never hit you once you get back in line. But the big advantage of going forward is that it gives you one second to move back before you turn around. And because you're moving back, the relative speed speed of the enemy projectiles decreases. This gives your eyes and brain a tiny extra bit of slow motion time to figure out how to turn back with the least damage. Repeat the maneuver on the other corner and you'll minimize damage taken over a long period of time. The butterfly maneuver is not 100% safe. You'll still get hit sometimes. And if you're unlucky or out of focus, you'll still die sometimes. Many of my own speedrun attempts have ended here. To start off, you want to pre-fire the BFG and empty out all your cells except for 80. No! Do a quick butterfly maneuver at close range. This maneuver actually looks more like an infinity symbol when you don't have a wall behind you. Go back with the rocket launcher and keep doing the butterfly maneuver. I usually go for the Megasphere once my health drops below 60, but we're already dangerously past that point. The safest way to grab the Megasphere is just after doing the butterfly wing to the right.
Keep your eyes focused on the lower half of your screen. After a while, you'll notice a small gap on the left side of the monster line. Switch to the BFG and after a butterfly wing to the right, quickly strafe left while firing the BFG to push through the monsters into safety. Okay. On this side there's more space, ammunition, and after a while you can just loop around easily. Float like a butterfly, sting like a horseshoe. 80 cells, um... I need, I need a lot more. The party is not over yet. The final battle is still ahead of us. All hell will break loose into this entire arena again. The fight is extraordinarily difficult with fast monsters because of the immense amount of projectiles and because the pain elementals will spawn a crowd of fast lost souls flying all around the map blocking your movement and getting you killed. You will need to move to the edges of the arena to grab ammo and megaspheres. However, the tower archvals are still alive, and here their area denial becomes a death sentence, especially since you can't grab the cells or megaspheres. There is a button buried under the floor to the north that starts crushers that kill the vials. But these crushers are slow, and they cause pain states on the archvials, who then ignore their range restrictions and target you from all across the map until you're toast. Pressing the button is not an option with fast monsters. The only option is to kill the archvials with rockets now. This is time consuming and boring, but necessary to survive the final onslaught. Let's do this. On average, each vial dies in 5 rockets. As a rule of thumb, vertical outer aim kicks in once you can see the bottom yellow circle of their platforms. If you can see the top yellow circle, you're too far and outer aim doesn't work anymore. Eight rockets, nine rockets, how many do you need? Oh, what, what the hell, more? Oh god. Wow. Seven, eight, nine rockets, this one as well. What the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh wow! I lost count of how many, it was more than 10 I think. Okay, and now this one. Oh 
Okay, are we done? We are done. Let's deal with the archies. I need more cells even. Uh, from this side. There's still one door left to open, and it's full of arch files. Pre-fire two BFG shots as you open the door. Then fire only one BFG shot at a time. This fight is much easier with fast monsters. With good timing, the archviles will rarely move outside. Switch to rockets when you're at about 200 cells. What are you doing out here? This pill is really annoying. All done? I think we're all done. I need one more pack of cells and then we can go. <sighs> here. We're now ready for the moment of truth. One final challenge stands between us and victory. There's 500 monsters to kill and we have 5 minutes left. Hug the button, press it, and wait exactly 14 seconds. This will get the pain elementals close to you. If you wait 15 seconds, they'll get too close, and you won't be able to move with the spawning lost souls. So at exactly 14 seconds, move back and fire 8 BFG rounds close range to kill as many pain elementals as possible. Run before you get surrounded by lost souls. This waiting strategy has two big advantages. One, the fight starts with fewer pain elementals than usual, reducing the chaos of lost souls flying around later. Two, if you run from the button without waiting, sometimes a couple of pain elementals will get stuck near their spawn, randomly trying to infight too far for your auto-aim, preventing you from getting 100% kills. That's the worst way to lose a speedrun. Loop around the arena without firing and return your focus to the pain elementals. Over time, these monsters will infight and move closer to your position, which will open a gap of space on the other end of the arena where the cells and megaspheres are. But that takes a while. For now, horseshoe around the pain elementals, firing three or four more shots along the way. Keep an eye on the flying lost souls above you. No matter how high they are, they will still block you. Do a final loop around here and go grab the Megasphere as you fire all but 40 cells at the Pain Elementals. You need to grab cells from the other side of the arena. By now, the monsters will have moved close enough. Run past this western building, fire the last BFG shot if you get blocked here, and grab some rockets. Okay, Archies must die. Start rocketing anywhere you see Archviles. Oh, fuck you. If things get ugly, you can hide in this spot, which is safe from projectiles, but you can't stay for long because of the lost souls. With the tower archviles dead, you have lots of space to do the hooks of the horseshoe maneuver here, but always keep an eye out on the lost souls when you do. I think all archies are dead. Once the files are dead, start firing the BFG at the revs. Whoa, 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 whoa. When most of the revs are dead, and without many homing rockets following you, you can go back around to engage the pain elementals. Try not to get surrounded by lost souls, or you'll be dead. No! Oh god, I can't get stuck! <sighs> Press the north button to open access to the middle building, where you can grab more cells later. Press this. Cells. Go. Two minutes remaining. Only a few monsters left. No, 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 no. Four percent health. Holy shit. 
gotta grab cells. Over there. Way too many lost souls here. Getting stuck on everything. All kills! All kills! Sub 35! Sub 35! Come, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yes! 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 Sub 35! Let's go! Yes! Oh shit, yes! This was my hardest Doom speedrun to this date. It took all of my skill and many of the lessons I've learned over the years to put together and perform the strategies necessary to beat this map with fast monsters enabled. And I was super happy and excited about this result. <sighs> wow, I did it. God Machine, fast monsters, sub 35 minutes, done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more speedruns, challenges, and other gaming curiosities. That's all, folks. See you later.